Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosana and look what we have here today. That's right, we're making a delicious chicken tamales with green sauce recipe. They smell incredible and they taste even better. So let's get started. We are going to start by bringing a large pot of well salted water to a boil. I added a total of 10 cups of water to the pot enough to fully cook the chicken and also provide us with four and a half cups of a delicious chicken broth to be used later on. I salted the water with one and a half teaspoons of salt. Once boiling, add two pounds of bone in chicken breast and one small onion or a quarter of a large white onion. Lower to medium heat, cover and let the chicken cook completely. Now we're going to make our easy tomatillo green chili sauce. We are starting with eight beautiful medium sized tomatillos. To prep them, simply remove the husk. Tomatillos are slightly acidic. Their flavor blossoms even more when made into sauces or salsas. They pair great with the heat from hot peppers or chilies. Okay, you can throw away the husk. You will instantly notice a sticky film over the tomatillo skin. Nothing to worry about. Take them over to the sink and rinse them well. Once rinsed, add to a medium pot with enough water to cover them. Then transfer to the stove and place over medium heat. While that reaches a boil, let's prep four jalapenos so we can cook them in the same pot. All we need to do is cut the stem off or remove it with your hands, whichever is easiest to you. Then incorporate with the tomatillos. It's important to note that the tomatillos do cook faster, so this means they will come out of the pot sooner, leaving the jalapenos behind so they can fully cook. While that's cooking, let's talk about the corn husk. They are sold in bags. Corn husk is a must for tamales and we're going to need 26 of them. The corn husk shapes, keeps the tamal moist, and allows them to cook perfectly. Before using, sort through them to get rid of any pieces with dark spots. Then choose medium to large whole pieces and rinse them well to remove any debris or corn fibers. Transfer to a large bowl and set it to the side. Back to the tomatillos. These look perfect. The color has faded, they are soft and whole. Remove from the heat immediately. It's important to know if your tomatillos burst open while cooking, they could turn bitter. Set them aside and allow them to cool completely and let the jalapenos finish cooking. These are now ready to join the tomatillos on their cooling down journey. They are soft, also faded in color and cooked through. When the chicken is completely cooked, remove from the heat and allow it to rest in its own broth for approximately 10 minutes. This step ensures a juicier chicken. Then remove from the pot and let the chicken cool completely and reserve the broth for later use. When the chicken is no longer hot, shred it into small bite pieces so I can easily absorb the green sauce. Since we mentioned green sauce, let's make it. To a blender, add the already cooled tomatillos and jalapenos. I'm going to add all four jalapenos, but I suggest you add them gradually. Since jalapenos vary in heat, it's always better to taste. Add more if you want to or stop when comfortable with the heat. Also add in a quarter teaspoon of whole cumin, five whole black peppercorns, and two whole cloves. In addition to that, incorporate two large garlic cloves in a small bunch of cilantro. Cover and blend until smooth. Now place a large pot over medium heat and pour in two tablespoons of canola oil. When hot, lower to medium low heat and pour in the tomatillo sauce we just blended. Now pour into the blender a quarter of a cup of water, just enough to get the last bit of sauce and add it to the pot. 
Stir and season with salt to taste. I'm adding one and a half teaspoons gradually. This gives us the opportunity to taste, stop if I feel it's enough, or add more if needed. Allow it to cook on a low simmer for approximately five minutes. Now add the shredded chicken and stir until everything is well combined. Let the chicken marry into the sauce as it keeps cooking on low heat for an additional three minutes. It shouldn't reduce too much. When done, remove from the heat. It's masa time. Using masa could not be easier. This is the brand and type that I use and it works incredible for me. Makes the best tamales. Okay, in a large bowl, add five cups of masa. The way that I measure the masa is I spoon it into the cups for a loose measurement rather than packing so much into each cup. Also add a quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder and salt to your liking. I'm adding one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. Keep in mind that the broth we will use later on has salt as well. The last thing we want is to end up with salty or undersalted tamales. Mix all the dry ingredients with your hands until fully incorporated. Now take eight ounces or one cup of lard and melt it in the microwave. Remove it from the microwave as soon as it's melted. Do not allow it to get too hot. Warm is what we're looking for. Go ahead and add it to the masa. In addition, we will pour in a quarter cup of canola oil and using your hand, mix well. The reason why the lard should not be hot is because we don't wanna burn ourselves during the mixing process. Warm to the touch is what we need. Once done, gradually pour in four and a half cups of the warm chicken broth to moisten the dough. Do one cup at a time and knead in between broth additions. Kneading is very important and should be done until the masa is smooth, evenly moistened, soft, and at a consistency that is easy to spread. See how I'm able to insert my whole hand without much force? That's what we want. If your masa feels thick, you can always add more broth or if you feel like it's too loose, add more instant masa in small amounts until you reach the consistency needed. This looks perfect. And now that we have everything prepped and ready, it's time to assemble. Here are my best tips for making a tamal. Take a whole corn husk into your hand then with the other hand, take a small amount of dough enough to spread and cover the husk. Spread in all directions. It will end up being a little over an eighth of an inch in thickness. When spreading across, stop about half an inch away from both ends of the husk. When spreading towards a narrow top, stop a little over midway and one inch from the bottom wide end. Place a generous amount of the chicken we just made in the center of the already spread masa. I know I said a generous amount, but make sure it's not way too much to the point we can't close the tamal. Now take one end from across and fold over as it covers the filling and meets the other end across from it. Press gently so both ends unite and hold. Peel the husk away from the part we just folded and take the opposite side and repeat the same procedure but towards the opposite direction. Peel the husk away and then with both hands close the bottom and top. The tamal is now closed and shaped. Take the shorter end and tuck under as you roll and wrap the tamal completely with the opposite end of the husk. Lastly, feel where the masa stops on the narrow top part, hold with both fingers and fold downward. It may require some practice if you've never made them, but it's worth it and remember, practice makes perfect. Sometimes you may end up with two small husks, not big enough to cover a tamal. You can discard them and pick one that's big enough, or if you feel adventurous, let me show you how to make them work. 
simply overlap them like so and shape your tamal as explained previously. It may feel a bit challenging, but it's a great way to keep practicing the craft. Repeat the same process with the masa and filling. To cook the tamales, you are going to need a steamer pot with the base at the bottom to raise the tamales and keep them away from the water. Pour in one inch of water and allow it to reach a boil. It's important to create a base where the tamales can be laid so they can cook evenly. Start by adding three tamales. Two of them need to be placed in the center with the open side facing each other and the third one where both tails meet in the center. All three will form a T-shape. Be very careful so you don't burn yourself. Now lay the tamales all around the base and build upward. Make sure the open side of the tamal is facing up. Once the water is boiling and all the tamales are in the pot, cover with the lid and lower to medium heat. Allow them to cook for approximately 50 to 55 minutes or until the dough is still soft but firm to the touch and will no longer taste like raw dough. Check the tamales once in a while to make sure they still have water at the bottom and if needed, add more. 55 minutes have passed and they look amazing. To check closely, you can remove one, open it, let it slightly cool down to firm up and taste to make sure it's done. Once you confirm it's firm and no longer tastes like raw masa, they are done. Remove the rest of the tamales from the heat and leave them covered. All that's left to do is serve and enjoy them fresh from your kitchen that's right the best tamales are made in your kitchen tamales are so deeply rooted in our culture i'm pretty sure every mexican has enjoyed this delicious dish not just once tamales are just part of our lives and i'm so proud to share them with you it's that time, we need to taste these gorgeous tamales. But before we do so, I wanna invite you to subscribe, like this video, and don't forget to click the notification bell. All right, I'm ready. These are so soft. Mmm. These are the best chicken tamales you are ever going to have. They are soft, flavorful, and with a nice kick of heat. Even though the process is a bit long, this recipe is not complicated at all. It is the trophy to your perseverance. Well, I hope you enjoy this recipe. Remember that you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and have an amazing rest of your day.